Oneonta, New York is a very small place upstate. It has maybe like 13, 14,000 people. At one time, it had the most bars per capita in New York State. And it has a lot of drunk white people. In fact, if you add a P to the end of Oneonta, it spells one on tap. Oneonta also has an incredible number of churches. Look at that list. But I didn't go to Oneonta to attend church or drink. I went to Oneonta to go to college, and that is where I met Eric Friedman. Eric lived downstairs from me in the dorm, and one day, must have been like this first, second, third day of college, I heard this incredible voice coming out of one of the rooms, and I went in there. I was really nervous introducing myself because up to that point, everyone I'd played with was like an amateur, but Eric sounded like a professional. Um, but he made me feel comfortable right away, and I think that that was something he did for a lot of people. He had this kind of confidence, but also a kindness and a sense of humor that made you feel like you were in good company. I knew right away what I was going to be doing for the rest of my college career, and possibly even longer, which was hanging out with this guy and making music. We started playing together from the very first day, and it just clicked. We were musically compatible, we made each other laugh, and we were fast friends. Oneana is a very cold place. It snowed from October pretty much through March. Um, but something about hanging out with Eric was always very warm. His dorm room was cozy with tie-dye and music and tons of comic books. In fact, we both loved comic books. They had a huge impact on Eric and they had a huge impact on me. Uh, as we began to play together more often, Comic books even had an influence on how we advertised our shows. Uh, we used to walk down to town. There was maybe one comic book store in all of Oneonta, New York. And whenever we would walk down there, we would talk about life, music, and whatever. The thing that he talked about the most, though, were his friends back home on Long Island. People like Paul, Rob, Seth... Uh, they were like celebrities to me before I even got a chance to meet them. And that was because of how much Eric talked about them. He would also gush about the amazing Ryan Cassidy, who is genuinely one of the best guitarists I've ever met. And I get why Eric talked about them so much. Eric loved his friends, but then again, they were very easy friends to love. 7 o'clock on the hill, my name is Brad Parmenter. And this is the spirit of radio. You've got it tuned to WRHO 89.7 FM, located in Oneonta, New York. We've got Eric Friedman and Gary Schaller in the studio, and they're going to perform for us a song entitled Evo Braun. Hi, everybody. Um, this is a song that I wrote last year, and uh, it's dedicated to one of the greatest men who ever lived, who passed away on Sunday. This is going out to Frank Zappa. Rest in peace. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, guys. That was great. Eric Friedman and Gary Schaller. Eric, what, yes. was, what was the inspiration behind uh, writing Eva Braun? Eva Braun, huh? Um, well, last year, in, uh, in back in good old high school, I had an English class where we had to write poetry. And so I was thinking of uh, girls throughout history, and if I could have any one of them, who would it be? And I came up with uh, Hitler's good old mistress back in... Uh, 19, what was it, 44, Ava Braun. She was true to her man. I'm Jewish, for anyone who's listening. <laughs> I am Jewish. I, I, I could very well be that. Jewish, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, by, what did you get as a grade on the poll? Uh, I got an A. Did you? Yeah, she All really right. enjoyed it. And uh, High school in Long Island, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, do anything that requires any sort of brain, and you're basically guaranteed a good grade. That's right. Eric and I left Oneonta in 1994, and we moved back to Long Island. I was very lucky. I went to college right near where he lived, so we got to keep playing music together. That November, we saw an ad for a band that needed a bass player. Eric brought me along to the audition and kind of told them we were a package deal. I'm grateful for that. The band was not our cup of tea, but the drummer was a guy named Mike Lavelle who called himself Doogie, and he was great. We just clicked, and after two performances, Eric and I left the band, and we took the drummer with us. Doogie was incredibly weird, which meant that Eric and I got along really well with him. He would do things like go up to pretty girls who came to our gigs and start talking to them about Ronald Reagan and economics. This was the 90s. I guess that's how you pick up girls in the 90s, talk to them about Ronald Reagan. And then he would do other things, too, like he would snort dental floss up his nose and pull it out of his mouth. Or maybe it was the other way around. I don't remember. He called this mental floss. What can you say? Doogie was a one-of-a-kind kind of guy and really fun to be in a band with. Sometimes he would get up from the drum kit and play a solo on the hardware or even on people's beer bottles uh, as they were taking a drink. Eric and Doogie and I very quickly became a band. We were briefly called Spork, but most of the time we were Foot. Eric and I spent a few weeks teaching Doogie the songs we had written, including the first song we ever wrote together, God Only Knows. Time, mid June or July. I'll sing cold winter butterflies that shine on the sky. When you came and you stole every drop of my soul, now I live underground with the worm and the mole. I went to the river and saw no reflection. Do 
the blind man And so forth to borrow But God only knows where I'll find you tomorrow Foot was a band where you could be absolutely crazy uh, and do insane stuff uh, musically and theatrically. And Eric was such an enormous part of that because um, of his humor and his adventurous nature. Um, he really pushed us and we pushed him. Um, I did things like one time, I think it was our last show, I shaved my guitar just um, to make Eric laugh and to make people in the audience get a reaction. And... Um, it was worth it. I had certainly never seen anybody shave a guitar before. I don't think Eric or Doogie had either. But that was the kind of stuff we did. Um, it was also an adventurous band musically where um, you know, Doogie would make incredibly weird sounds with his cymbals and Eric would pound on the strings and I played with light bulbs for a while, using light bulbs on the neck of the guitar, and it was all really fun.
something I really loved about Foot was that it was the kind of band that made people smile and dance and laugh. Um, this was the mid '90s, and there was so much serious music happening and um, depressing music and angry music. I was happy to be in a band that could play play really heavy music sometimes, but it was never um, all that serious. In fact, it was usually incredibly fun, and we had a great time. Eric was always the heart and soul of Foot. His inventive bass playing, his psychedelic lyrics, and his soaring, incredible, unbelievable vocals, they really grounded us. They grounded us the way that all great funk should, but at the same time, it also sent us into outer space. It was like Funkadelic and Sid Barrett had a baby. That's what we sounded like. Yeah. 
Eric was always really proud of other people, like his friends and his son. But I don't know if Eric was ever as proud of his own music as he should have been. I think, for Eric, that maybe music wasn't something to be proud of. I think Eric saw music as part of the natural world around us, a part of the universe. Maybe for Eric, being proud of music would be like being proud of a tree or a blue sky. Personally, I am incredibly proud of the music Eric and I made together. I'm proud that he and I were friends. I'm proud we made people smile and have fun. I will miss him. I will never forget Foot, and I will never forget Eric Friedman. Cream of mushroom soup du jour. Our bodies are slow.